We get a strong hoarfrost like this one when fog comes through and the fog freezes to the plants. Last night we did have a really strong fog and when I saw that fog rolling through and I checked the weather forecast, I knew that this morning a good photo opportunity would be to come out to an area like this where I can foreground some of the plants and show off what the hoarfrost does to the area. It's interesting, it's lively. As you can hear, the geese love it. And of course, it's really beautiful. I think one of the challenges with hoarfrost is capturing it in a good composition. Uh, as I came through the areas that I was scouting out last night and again this morning, it's very obvious that these flat, low areas where the fog rolls through uh, receive the most prominent frost. As you come up into the hills and the more complex landscapes, the wooded landscapes, where the fog doesn't come in, there's almost no frost to be found. So looking for compositions in the low flat areas is challenging. Fortunately today, I found this uh, hunting field. Um, the property owner came through this morning and gave me permission to photograph out here when he saw that I wasn't trouble. A uh, really friendly guy. Uh, dispersed around the edges of the field are some woods and I'll be able to incorporate some of that into my frost photos this morning as well. The challenge as I see it will be finding unique and interesting compositions and getting those photos taken before this frost melts, which it is doing rapidly now that the sun is above the horizon. The light's perfect, a glistening uh, side light coming across. I'm not shooting it backlit so that I'm keeping the sun out of the shot. So when I wanna shoot wide angle like I am today, I've really got to keep in mind whether I want the sun in the shot or not. And today I'm going to try and keep it out of the shot, which means I'm uh, shooting the scene side lit. So on one half of the frame, all the uh, frost on the foliage uh, is sort of glistening. On, on the other side, it's in shadow. It's not the normal way I would shoot a scene, but I don't know, it's kind of working for me. Um, the uh, color of the light is a little cool right now, so I'm warming it up in the camera and then I'll rewarm it again in post-processing. But uh, so in, in, in my image, this fallen branch is sort of dominating the foreground of the scene. Uh, shot on rule of thirds, the, the branches in the bottom third. Uh, the mid-ground is essentially the landscape as you see it. All the stuff that normally I wouldn't try to shoot wide angle with uh, just one third of the frame designated up to the sky. I'll grab the shot now. This is a really cool little scene that's finally letting me get into the landscape orientation. Uh, lots of interest running horizontally through the frame, including a couple of different scenes with a path in between. So we're just shooting a field with a couple copses of woods. It's a lot of really interesting play between the shadows and the bright areas that are being backlit by the sun. Because of the frost, those areas are really bright white and the shadows are super dark. So yeah, I'm taking this at 16 millimeters and I'm stopped all the way down to uh, F20, I believe. F18 to make sure I get a good sun star. And the exposure I'm making is a little dark to make sure there's definition in the sun star. And then uh, later when I process the image on the computer, I'll be sure to raise up the shadow areas in the foreground. It's every bit as peaceful a morning as you might expect with the exception of one jogger I saw earlier. <laughs> I hope he wasn't lost. And then one quick alternation of the composition here, as you can see, I'm walking in the scene as I'm shooting it. So rearranging the scene this way has put this smaller distant copse of trees between two of these new ones, a little negative space right here. And uh, uh, this uh, side grove is just coming into the side of the frame. So this is basically just kind of uh, jumbling everything up so it's a little more disorderly, maybe a little more chaotic, but also a little more fun and interesting. Everything's not lined out. So there's a little more spontaneity to this scene. This scene is saying, what are you doing to me, nature? What is happening here? <laughs> I'm playing along in nature's cruel trick.
I took an underexposure and an overexposure as well, just in case I want to play with it that way in Photoshop. When I keep it as dark as it needs to be to get the sun star, uh, the scene, because I'm shooting directly into the sun, the rest of the scene is completely dark. And I'm afraid that when I get home, there may not be enough detail in that part of the scene to pull the shadows out. So I took some safety exposures just to be sure I've got enough material to play with when I get it all back in the computer. The melt has chased me out of the field and down to this last area of shade here. So I'm going to take a road picture. I don't know how many more road pictures I can get away with, but I kind of like this one. A fairly straight shot, but the canopy of trees over the road is giving a little interest. And then of course, here in the foreground, I've got an opportunity to uh, add interest to that by showing off the hoarfrost. So I prefer the arrangement of the road when taken from this side, but uh, there's really not much to show off in terms of the frost in the foreground this way. Uh, of course, bang on down the middle of the road is too much of a story about the road, not enough about these interesting weather and climate conditions. So I've taken the camera here off the right side of the road and I've foregrounded some of these cattails that are now uh, weighed down by the frost. I can just see a little bit of the road in the image and I'm shooting this at uh, all the way out at 16 millimeters with a really bottom heavy composition with a nice foreground of frosty and honestly somewhat tasty looking vegetation right in front of the camera lens. Now that I had that captured, I want to try one more with a more telephoto. So obviously as I approach the camera, I see I don't need this downward looking perspective anymore, but when you're shooting wide angle, uh, that's uh, definitely something I recommend is getting your camera pointed down to the ground. As you can see in the photo that I'm sure I just showed you, um, that's, going to, uh, that's going to accentuate that stuff you're putting in the foreground. You put it in there for a reason, so you might as well show it off. First telephoto lens I'm throwing on, and maybe the last is the 135 millimeter f2 and i'm going to make a special video dedicated to this lens later so if you want to learn more about the lens that i use to make the image that's coming up uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and you'll see all about it and because i'm not so interested in showing off the foreground now and i can't i'm going to move the composition here off the side of the road and more into the middle First off, I'm going to utilize a fairly high perspective. This is going to allow me to be shooting down more on the scene, which is going to allow me to put more of the top of the frame in the photo while excluding the sky. hear that good crunchy sound that's sand from <laughs> the video I made at the Indiana Dunes I brought it all the way from Lake Michigan right here to Illinois you're welcome Illinois having a rotating screen like this is gonna be super clutch for allowing me to actually see what's happening <laughs> in my composition there now, isn't that better? Now I will, um, got a little problem with level. I'll correct that really quickly. Looks like we need to come down a little on the right side. And the wobbliness you're seeing is not a problem with my tripod, it's the camera mount having a little trouble with that thing, so I'm working on it. Known, known and identified problem. Now, um, now the only blue from the sky in the scene, and I'm gonna drop the exposure just a little on here, is uh, now the only blue in the sky is uh, sort of what's bleeding through these tree limbs. And that's actually really interesting. The tree limbs are diffusing the light. There's actually a very light fog in the air behind that I can just barely perceive and having that then further diffused by the tree limbs uh, adds sort of an interesting almost feathery texture to it. I'm keeping that in the image. It's sort of a scene in a scene. There's a lot of negative space that's formed by the road here and I've got a feeling that when I 
recrop this for various presentations later, that part's gonna come out and the focus will then shift more towards uh, the opening in the trees that the road passes through, as well as the very interesting scene that's only hinted at beyond that. I'm also gonna shift the composition just slightly to the left. And I can also see in the video playback that it's coming out a little cool. The final rendition will be warmer than this. We are getting there with this one, guys. And then I'm, I'm gonna try two different exposures. The first one is at F2. So this is all the way down at a 2,000th of a second at F2 uh, for a really shallow depth of field with a very narrow focal plane about halfway through the tree tunnel. And then I'll take this again at a more conventional uh, aperture that will give me, I can't capture all this at 135 millimeters. I can't capture all this in sharp focus, but I'll try a maybe a F11 or F13. That'll give me basically the uh, tree tunnel area of the picture in focus and then allow the, the uh, remaining what lies beyond and in front of it to fall slightly out of focus. Uh, I made this final image in sort of three different ways. So first I shot it at a wide angle to show off the foreground. And then I shot it at a telephoto, first with a very shallow depth of field and then with a broader depth of field. So out of those three images, I'm really interested in hearing what you liked best. Normally at this part of the video, I tease what's coming up on the channel, but honestly, <laughs> but honestly, I have no idea. Well, it looks like next time I find even better frost. So I put on my best orange clothes to sniff around in a winter wonder woods. Oh, you're gonna wanna see that. Yeah. You should probably subscribe. So hoarfrost, interesting compositional challenges, a good way to uh, let your photography take you outside and just enjoy the fresh air. This has been flyover photography from an early, crisp, beautiful morning in Illinois. Keep an eye out and a foot forward.